Welcome back to Double M Innovations. I want to make some changes to that rotating flow turbine, that 2.0 version. And what I wanted to do, I wanted to decrease the size. Originally, I had two lazy Susan shells stacked together on each other with a space in between where I have that nozzle arm sticking out. That nozzle chamber, oh, I think it was probably over two inches. I don't need one that big. And actually what that does, it just built up a whole bunch of rotating water like a liquid flywheel. And all that did was just add a whole bunch of weight to it. So I want to eliminate that. So I'm going to go to just using one of the shells and put a clear plexiglass top on it. And that way I'll be able to see what's going on in there too. It'll be a whole lot thinner and less weight. And second, underneath I want to eliminate those two pipes I had channeling water back to the axle. I'm going to use the structure of the shelf itself to channel the water back. I think if I knocked out some of that webbing underneath the shelf, there will be plenty of room for water to get channeled back. And I also wanted to make a structure so it's a little more steady, so I can have a bearing on top and below. That will make it a little more steady when it's turning, because it will start to wobble pretty good. I'm just using cheap wheelbarrow bearings, and that's what happened. They're not real precision. So I'm going to get at that now. The secondary part of this turbine, where the blades are, what I'm going to use here is just part of the structure of this lazy Susan shelf. I knocked out some of these, uh, some of this webbing, and put some uh, wood framing, and then I'm covering it up with some pieces of sheet metal to make some channels for the water to flow to the center of the axle where it will be expelled. And on the nozzle chamber side I got some holes drilled in the outer, outer rim where the water will exit to get into these other channels. Probably, probably been easier if I just had a great big pizza pan, a two foot pizza pan to sit over that. but. I didn't have anything like that. All I had was some pieces of flashing, roof flashing to stick on there. And that's what I'm doing. On this version of the turbine, I'm going to do some experimenting with just one nozzle arm in this nozzle chamber. I have provisions for another one if I want to do that. But I'm going to do more experimenting with just one. This is... Uh, just some quarter inch brake line. And down in the center here, I got a nylon bushing. I guess you can't see it. There's a nylon bushing down there to help seal this chamber up. And underneath, I got this packed full of water repellent grease like I did before. And these are just the exit ports right here, so the water will just splash down and around. And for the top of this nozzle chamber, I made a plexiglass cover with a homemade hub of some parts I had. This was some plexiglass I had. It, I probably had it for like 15 years. Couldn't quite get all the glue and stuff out of it, but it'll work. I'll be able to see now a little more what's going on inside. Then I also got this framework I got put together. In this top support piece, I just have one of those cheap wheelbarrow bearings again. I'll use that. It'll make this more stable. I like to use the stuff that I had, and I didn't need to buy anything extra for this version. And then when I was putting this together, unfortunately I dropped it and I broke some of this rim plastic off. But it'll still function. So I'm going to get this together and we'll give it a spin. I got input valves for air and water on this one so it'll be interesting to see what happens. I'm not sure if this silicone has sealed up but I'm going to give it a test just with air first. I got my compressor line over here and I'll get this hooked up.
Well, here goes. Unbalanced, it looks like, but it's moving along pretty good. I've turned it up more. Got the full throttle here. I don't want to get holes in my fingers by hitting them screws. The silicone was supposed to take 24 hours to set up, but I, th I think it's pretty good. It hasn't been a day, but it seems to work. With that nylon bushing in the center, it's a little more steadier. So I got it, I can hook it up to water in there. The water, this is the other exit ports right here, so when the water comes down, it's going to splatter all over. But the air, you know, it operates pretty decent. I'll have to get it off the back of my pickup though to test it on water. I'll do that next. Well, I got the garden hose connected now. Set up for testing it with water. So I'll set this down. Turn it on. See what happens. Yeah, it's spitting out water from underneath there. I don't think the seam is leaking. Or maybe it is a little bit. But I can see it filling up with water. I'll turn it on all the way. I'm getting wet. Well, this nozzle chamber isn't completely filled up with water. I can't really stop that with my fingers. But it sure is spraying out water. I think it mostly was just from underneath. pressure hooked up now too and I got myself a piece of plywood I can protect myself from all the splashing and I'll put some pressure to it here I think I'm going to try water pressure and air pressure and see what happens. Might be kind of cool. 
There's the water pressure. Try a little air pressure on there too. Whoa. That that blew out the sealant. Too much pressure. It blew out the sealant. When I put this on there, I could put twice as many screws, but I kind of left it off. I thought that sealant would hold, but it just blew out. It took too much pressure. It's nice to be able to see what's going on inside this turbine. It only fills up with water, you know, about this far. But I can see a few things I need to do. For improvement. I guess that experiment was a little reckless when I put that air on. I don't remember if I opened it all the way or if I just cracked it. But anyway, it was way too much pressure and just blew that gasket out on there. Just couldn't hold it. When I had this together with uh, two shelves, I had twice as many screws in there. But maybe if I would have left it dry longer or put more screws in Oh, this one here, look at it. This screw here looks like it stripped out. Yeah, a couple of these screws stripped out. That one there too. But anyway, when this was spinning so good, I, I couldn't really stop it, you know, trying to hold on to the shaft. I could slow it down a little bit, but it had a lot of torque. These turbines are kind of fun to make. You know, they're easy to make and they're pretty effective. They're just pretty simple. One thing that I do know, I kind of knew it at the time, is I'm going to need some kind of tube down here for the exhaust so any of that water coming off doesn't catch this webbing and just be thrown out to the edge. But I kind of expected that. I just wanted to be able to grease that fitting. Eventually I want to get to a steam turbine design of this. I think that would be pretty useful. But for that I'm going to have to go back to using metal, something a little bit stronger. With this plastic it's, it's too weak. That's what happened with this plastic. It's just too weak and the screw stripped out and I got too much pressure in there and it just blew that out. So I need to get back to using metal. Now I like the idea of using these bicycle rims. This one, oh, I think it's maybe a 20 for a 27 inch wheel. It's a little over an inch wide, so I'd be plenty room for a nozzle arm in there for steam, and then I can get an aluminum plate to bolt on each side of these nice flat surfaces. I should be able to bolt it tight enough so it doesn't pull apart. I wouldn't be able to see through it like I can with this, but I could see what was going on pretty good in through that one, so I really don't need to see what's going on. And what I think is really nice about this type of turbine is that it can be used for air, you know, air, steam, or a fluid. Now, if I had steam going through here and it condenses, it's still going to push the water out, so I'm still going to get torque from that too. So I think that's pretty beneficial. And what I think is really nice about this type of turbine, I don't have to machine a lot of parts. I can usually find something I can use. Because it's just pretty basic. It's pretty simple. So I think my next step is I'm going to start focusing on using this wheel rim 
as a turbine. This would be lighter weight than the plastic too. I used it on that other air turbine I made a video of. That worked pretty good. I just slapped plywood on each side. And that was that worked pretty good, but I'm sure it was leaking out, but it was just for air. But I'm gonna try to get one so it'll work on steam next. So thanks for checking in and we'll see you again.